The Division 2 had a story set more than six months after the first game. Following a viral outbreak that has spread nationwide, a rebuilding process has started. However, survivors have to cope with the issue of gang invasions amidst the chaos. This is where you step in, as the Joint Task Force and the Division try to instill order in society. The game starts with you receiving a distress call request for Division personnel to head to Washington DC. The White House will then serve as your main base of operations for the game. The Division 2 is essentially a looter shooter. The underlying objective of the game is to seek improvements in your equipment to maximize your gear score by seeking out better weapons, better armor, and various other drops. After completing the main campaign and story, you'll be greeted by a new endgame enemy faction called the Black Tusk. They have invaded all of Washington DC, unlocking revised invaded versions of the main campaign missions. The endgame content involves you taking back the city once again, revisiting those main missions to eradicate the Black Tusk. Although these replay missions utilize the same maps and environments, they differ in terms of goals and enemies encountered. Furthermore, the Black Task enemies are a step up from the normal foes that you face while working your way through the main campaign. They are better armed in terms of weaponry and are far more aggressive, making the replay missions way more challenging in nature. Endgame content also introduces three new weapon specializations, along with daily and weekly quests. All three specializations have their own skill trees, which will work towards leveling up in the endgame. As you can imagine, between actively finding better loot, modifying your gear, and leveling up your skill trees, there's a lot to keep you busy in the endgame as you work towards your optimal build. One of the most pressing questions I had when I first bought The Division 2 was whether it will be an enjoyable title to be played solo. Based on my solo gameplay as well as cooperative gameplay prior to this review, I conclude that The Division 2 can indeed be played solo, but the game is so much more fun when working through content with your friends. I found it slightly challenging as a solo player who is new to The Division franchise in the early stages of the game. I often find myself being outflanked by opponents as I have no one watching my back in certain choke points. However, I can see why this is so as The Division 2 is designed as an online multiplayer experience. Missions are designed with teamwork and communication in mind. Another downside of being a solo player is that you will find yourself completing side missions in an attempt to level up just to meet the level requirements of certain main missions. Unlike main missions, the side missions do not have a matchmaking function, making them lonely affairs if you do not have friends to group up with. Thankfully, for the main missions, the Division 2 comes with an online matchmaking system that will allow you to team up with random other players to tackle content. Squads of 4 can be formed at any point in time via the in-game menu. However, one minor annoyance that I experienced was that I would sometimes be ported halfway into a mission that another group is in the midst of completing. There does not seem to be an option for you to opt for a fresh start when joining a matchmaking squad for a main mission. You might be better off forming up your own squad if you'd like to ensure you are there for the mission right from the beginning. Without a doubt, the Division 2 truly comes alive when you are experiencing it in a multiplayer format, with proper voice communications and organized squad loadouts. The solo gameplay is decent, but be prepared for a lonely and more challenging leveling experience where you always have to watch your own back in combat. From the moment I loaded up the game, I am being showered with a variety of weapons and equipment. After being familiar with the recall pattern of an assault rifle for a few minutes, I quickly swapped to a newfound submachine gun of a higher level and damage output that I've looted off a random enemy. This is the heart of the Division 2's looter-shooter concept. There's always something better to chase after. For example, beyond your weapon and equipment, you can also choose to unlock different skills that serve various functions in combat. You can command a drone that reinforces your armor, or even a turret that lays down suppressive fire for you. 
You can even wield a riot shield that provides you with more protection when moving out into open spaces. There are a total of 8 skills for you to unlock, each with at least multiple variants to unlock as well. For example, you can unlock different variants of a turret, one that is a mounted machine gun, another that is a flamethrower, another that functions as a high caliber semi-automatic sniper. You can even go as far as to modify your weapons, adding zoom scopes on your rifles or accessories to help you better manage recoil. Each modification will now feature one positive and one negative trait, making customization a complex procedure with trade-offs to consider. Playing in a squad also adds another layer of complexity in terms of gear loadout. For example, in a solo loadout, you might want skills like a turret that can guard your back against flanking enemies. In a squad where there is less of a need to watch your blind spot, you might be better suited deploying a scanner option that flags where enemies are hiding to your entire squad. The possibilities are almost endless, providing an incentive to always be searching for better gear and equipment from completing content. Throughout my playthrough of the main campaign, there were numerous deaths and near deaths experience thanks to the improved AI enemies in the Division 2. I found them to be much more reactive this time round, always looking to outflank you to shoot you in the back. Even the melee rushers, the traditional cannon fodder, do not run at you in a straight line. Enemies will never stay stationary in a covered place for too long. In addition, enemies are adept at using various tech gadgets such as a remote control car explosive, machine gun turrets, or even rocket launchers. The improved AI system is a much needed change, as it makes the game's repeatable missions fresh on every difficulty level. Although the environment is the same in repeat missions, the firefights never pan out in the exact same way on every single attempt keeping things engaging for you. I strongly encourage you find like-minded friends to experience the multiplayer gameplay for yourself, as that is where the game truly shines. The end game content offers so much to do that I can certainly foresee this game keeping you busy for a period of time. The Division 2 is arguably the most polished looter shooter out there in the market having improved upon the flaws of the series' first game. The base game has set a strong tone for future updates and content, and I can't wait to see what the developers has in store for us in the road ahead. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next review. If you liked the video, feel free to leave a like or a comment. I look forward to hearing from you.